All right, it's block seven, the greatest generation. Section two, the rise of the dictators, with the section beginning American isolation. While this is going on in Europe, the United States is avowedly and determinedly isolationist. We want nothing to do with this, that the World War I had been a mistake. The United States is safe behind its great Admiral Atlantic and Admiral Pacific, meaning uh, protected by the power of the United States Navy behind our vast oceans. Um, Americans took George Washington's advice to heart not to be involved in the affairs of the rest of the world. There is even a move for a constitutional amendment to forbid Congress to declare war unless the United States was directly attacked itself. Uh, there are magazines and posters and songs you can see, you know, I didn't raise my boy to be a soldier, uh, was a song in the 1930s, um, you know, that was very popular. Uh, America First was a group of people dedicated to keeping the United States out of the affairs of the rest of the world. In Congress, a senator from North Dakota um, named Gerald Nye ha held a series of hearings uh, with the stated purpose of getting at the bottom of why the United States got involved in the mess that was World War I in the first place. Uh, progressive muckrakers and communist muckrakers had been publishing articles in the 1930s not saying that it was unrestricted submarine warfare that got the United States involved in World War I. It was not Woodrow Wilson's idealism that got the United States into World War I. It was not the Zimmerman telegram that got the United States into World War I. No, they said. In fact, it was the arms industry, merchants of death, they called them. The people who made the guns, the bombs, the tanks, uh, the uniforms, etc., etc. And to make uh, a lot of money, the arms industry uh, purposely kind of brought the United States into war. Um, Gerald Nye holds hearings in Congress uh, on these beliefs. Um, the argument was the arms dealers got very, very rich from the war. There's a big element of anti-Semitism. A lot of Jewish businessmen were involved in this. Um, they were attacked, you know, you, you know, dirty Jew bankers and whatnot. Um, that they profited from the war, and if they profited from the war, they must have been the cause of the war. It is true that arms dealers did profit from the war. You know, lots of people needed guns and tanks and bombs during the war. Um, but really, it was not why they had joined. But that did not mean that it, a lot of people didn't believe it. And uh, Senator Nye had quite a big backing, quite a big, big following, uh, saying that the United States got into the war to make a few you know, Jews rich, and we would not ever do that again. A very popular guy, Senator Nye, in the 1930s. The United States further distances itself from the rest of the world uh, with the Johnson Debt Default Commission. The United States was angry that it had not gotten its loans paid back from World War I, loans to Britain, loans to France, loans to really anybody else. Um, so they passed a law, um, a very punitive law. Uh, the, Jan the Johnson Debt Default Act of 1934 was punitive, meaning it was, a, it was a, a law intended to punish. And what the act said was that the United States could not, in the future, ever loan money to a country in default. That if a country defaulted on its loans, could not pay them back, the United it was illegal for the United States to give them any more loans. Furthermore, countries that were in default were banned from selling their bonds to the American people. This was thought of by isolationist America as a way to prevent being sucked into another conflict, a way to prevent being sucked into the financial responsibilities that came uh, with the First World War. And then Congress took it a step further and they tried to legislate official neutrality uh, through the Neutrality Acts of 1935, 1936, and 1937. They were made quickly after uh, Mussolini's invasion of Ethiopia, and the idea is to legislate the United States out of getting sucked into another war in Europe. And it states a couple things. It says, number one, the President of the United States has the authority to declare when there is a war. There is war between Italy 
and Ethiopia. Once the president declares that there is war, a foreign war, a couple of rules come into effect. Number one, and look here for your consequences of World War I. The first rule of these neutrality acts, number one, no American may travel on a belligerent ship. That was the problem with Lusitania. There was American citizens on a British ship. The ship got torpedoed and sank, and America got pissed off because 128 Americans died. So the first rule is, if there's a war between Italy and Ethiopia, no American can travel on an Italian or an Ethiopian ship. And if there's war between Britain and Germany, no American can travel on a British or a German ship. That's number one. Number two, no U.S. company may sell or transport arms to any country at war, all right? Uh, that if Italy and Ethiopia were at war, the United States could not sell or transport guns, tanks, uniforms to either of the countries at war. Number three, the United States could not make loans to any country at war. This is an obvious attempt by Congress to absolutely prevent the United States from getting involved in any foreign wars in the 1930s. It makes no distinction, as you can tell, it makes no distinction between a country who is attacked and a country who is the attacker. It makes no distinction between countries that are fighting for their very existence and countries that are trying to take over other countries. Um, it was short-sighted. Uh, and it kind of gave the dictators kind of free reign because they said, well, the United States can't help out um, other countries that are attacked. Other countries, remember, by 1937, 1938, Germany has been rearming, Italy has been rearming, France and Britain have not been rearming. After these laws were passed, the United States could no longer lend Britain and France money to rearm themselves. So these acts, although designed to keep the United States out of the war, uh, in reality what it did is it gave a lot of advantages uh, to uh, the dictatorships of the world.